channel. If you're new here, my name is Day, and on this channel, I talk about cybersecurity, cloud security, and other life stuff. So this video is gonna be a vlog on my day in the life as a cloud threat detection engineer or security engineer, whatever the case may be, at Datadog. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. My day usually starts, you know, a little early, so between like seven and seven thirty. Um, right now it's currently seven fifty-two. Um, I've been up a little while, so just getting some work done. And um, I usually just start my day, just kind of reviewing my work from yesterday, um, looking at certain things I did I did yesterday, and um, then starting new work on a new on 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 the new day, so that um, I can start completing like some of my tasks and stuff like that. So yeah, I kind of be taking you through my day. I have my stand up in about eight minutes, and um, we'll see after the stand up. I just got up my stand up and pretty chill. Um, just kind of talking about what we did yesterday, what we're gonna do today, and if we have any blockers. And just gonna discuss it, like how we can get past those blockers. So right after stand up, I just merged a new detection um, into production and um, just waiting for the deployment to complete. And then uh, I'm gonna continue working on some detections. Um, just testing them, making sure they work as they should, and then um, if they are ready, I can push them to production. So right now, I'm actually gonna be working on an AWS IAM detection idea. And um, yeah, I work in that for as long. I usually try to like do some a good amount of deep work in the morning so that when I start dragging in the afternoon, you know, I can use that energy for something else. But I usually try to get most of my, my, my work done in the morning. So I'm going to get right into that. And um, I'll see you guys in the next part of my day. All right, guys. So it's currently 11.06 a.m. And I just got out of a meeting. It's basically a meeting um, for the product. Um, so the dog is a product company, if you didn't know, and um, a lot of what we do is like stuff for the product, make sure that, you know, we're developing new features to enhance our customer experience and just enhance the product in general. Uh, so a lot of our meetings are usually towards that. So this meeting was kind of something like that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much um, my morning. Uh, I've been also working on troubleshooting this rule that I'm working on or detection uh, basically it's a little it's a little too noisy I mean it makes sense the way the rule is designed it's like it's it's meant to capture like enumeration activity which makes sense like if there's like enumeration going on it's definitely gonna be noisy but I'm trying to like tune the rule or uh, create like some exclusions to make sure like it's not excessively noisy and only captures the right logs and the needed amount of information not just like everything so right now i'm just going to try to brainstorm and see if i can think of a way that would be the most effective way to tune this rule and make it more effective less noisy but also not uh not not too exclusive so that's what i'm going to be working on uh till midday before i go to launch so I have about an hour of just like brainstorming and just sort of figure something out. If I can't figure it out, I'll probably reach out to my team lead or another engineer just gonna see if I can get uh, some ideas on like, you know, what I can possibly do to for the rule. So that's what I'm gonna be working on now. And um, yeah, so let's get right into work. Alright, so I lied. I'm actually going to be making a smoothie real quick. And 
Yo, so let's make a smoothie. Okay, I lied. The smoothie machine broke, so no smoothie for me this morning. I'm gonna get back to work and um, continue my brainstorming and then get lunch in like 20 minutes. So it's currently 12.45, pretty late lunch um, today, but that's because I got caught up with work stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and eat these rice and spaghetti and stew and vegetable. Tastes good, trust me. Uh, and I'm gonna watch this course on uh, DevSecOps while I'm eating. So yeah, grab my lunch and then get back to work right after. See ya. Alright, so I'm actually done with my lunch, but I still have like 30 minutes-ish of my lunch break, my self-allocated lunch break, but uh, I usually kind of just like do like work and lunch at the same time. I probably should take like full lunches, but who cares? But uh, yeah, I'm still kind of watching this, looking at this course for like DevSecOps Essentials. Um, right now, I'm kind of working on this lab for uh, using Docker Bench to enhance container security. I've been learning a lot more about container security, um, Kubernetes, all of those things recently with, uh, you know, my, with um, now working in like cloud threat detection engineering, everyone is using containers and like Kubernetes these days. So like being able to like secure those environments or like write detections for them is really important. Um, and containerization is like, it's 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 fundamentally easy to grasp but compared to like orchestration and like kubernetes it's like a lot more abstract um when you're dealing with like kubernetes like there's a lot of abstraction and there's like so many co components to it that it's it's a lot but um definitely gonna like take at least like some time to just like focus on kubernetes and just like really learn it um i've been learning it like in a really um all over the place way but um, I definitely have plans of like taking like a month or two or three to just like focus on learning Kubernetes. Like a couple of resources like uh, A Cloud Guru. There's also like Kubernetes the hard way, which I, I've heard has like a little, like it's really good to learn about Kubernetes. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna continue this course, um, learn about like um, bench, using Docker bench to enhance container security. But afterwards I'll get back to work. Um, I wanna get some things done for some detections, some detections I'm working on and um, see how much I can get done before the end of the day. All right guys, so it's currently 3.43 p.m. and there was a short power outage, but I'm back online, so I'm back to work now. And um, I probably would be done with, with work in like a, maybe like an hour-ish. Um, I was a little less productive today than I was yesterday, just because of like so many distractions. Um, but yeah, I try to, get some focus time in and get some work done before I head out and move on with the rest of the day. Alright guys. <clears throat> Alright guys, so I just finished some work on this rule I was working on, which I pretty much worked on today. Um, it was kind of part of why I was not productive. I just spent so much time just really trying to brainstorm this rule and figure out the best way to make it efficient. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned it was like an enum enumeration rule. And like the thing with like enumeration is like it's really noisy. Uh, like if you're doing, if you're enumerating, for example, like if you're enumerating something in an environment, there's gonna be a lot of like probes you're gonna be making to um, whatever endpoint it is you're enumerating. So that's gonna generate a lot of traffic. So it's really, really noisy. Um, and like, you know, detecting it is like, it's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of like, you know, alerts that to, to deal with, right? It's just kind of like, 
um, if you've worked in a sock before, like if you're dealing with like vulnerability scans and stuff like that, some of it might be like, you know, actionable, some of it might not be. It might be like external vulnerability scans that you might not really be able to do anything about because they're just scanning like the public IP address space. That's kind of the thing with like enumeration, like, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, you're not supposed to be, you know, it's not supposed to be normal activity, but like when it's like it's not really actionable sometimes because like some of it is actually like false positives right if you're because and it's different in the cloud right because enumeration is like you know enumeration enumerating like iem resources which like an ec2 instance could like enumerate iem resources to see like you know all of the things or even like if you're navigating in like the aws management console right if you're looking at resources like you could be you could generate a lot of like you know um enumeration like activity so it's usually really sometimes like for enumeration type of rules to just kind of capture the right events um so i just spent so much time just really you know digging into that um and i i, I was able to get some ideas to make the rule a lot a little bit more efficient uh but i don't really think it's going to be as efficient as i think because that's just how enumeration works um it's not that any like having like detections for enumeration is bad um it's usually like the things that are actionable that are more precedent that you want to pay more attention to but having those enumeration um, detections is good to kind of trace back to the initial vector for an attack right so like the discovery vector of an attack so I I just did some changes and I'm kind of waiting for some suggestions or recommendations from um, other product uh, product detection engineers to kind of see like if you know there's anything that they could suggest to make the make it make the detection make more sense uh maybe from their from them having more experience so i'll see how that goes um right now i'm just gonna do a little bit of work on a different rule and kind of see how that works out so yeah that's it all right guys so it's currently 5 40 and i'm done for the day um <clears throat> I was just working on another rule. Um, I was trying to figure out a regex query for a part of the detection because like, I don't wanna like, I wanna filter out specific parts of the log file. Um, and the regex query is like so freaking long. I might have to figure out a different way to do what I need to do. Um, but pretty good progress today. Did some meaningful and productive work and I'm about to go for my jujitsu classes. So I recently started doing jujitsu a couple of months ago in March. Uh, yeah, in March. We're in May. Yeah, so I started in March. It's kind of fun. I actually like it. And um, so I'm going to be going today and, you know, um, getting tapped out on the mat. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah. I'll see you guys in my jujitsu classes.
Professor Jordan. Um, he is our jiu-jitsu instructor here. And uh, I usually come for like the Monday and Wednesday adult fundamental classes, and he's the instructor here. So um, how long have you been doing jiu-jitsu? 15 years, May the 17th, 2007. Sweet. So like, how'd you get into jiu-jitsu? How did I get in, into jiu-jitsu, or yeah. why did I get into jiu-jitsu? But both, how did you and why did you get into it? Well, I was an amateur boxer uh, for from the age 11 to 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I had a, aspirations to make the U.S. Olympic boxing team, mm -hmm. uh, which I failed to do so. And you know, I was I got a little tired of of the politics and boxing, and I knew I still had a lot of because I was a young man. I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I still knew I had a lot of fight left in me. Mm -hmm. So I decided. I needed to learn something else, and I always knew that with boxing, of, of course, I could, um, you know, I had, I had knuckle game, yeah. you know, but being a smaller guy, I always wondered what would happen if I was put on the ground against somebody bigger. That just always crossed my mind for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I then found um, jiu-jitsu. I was watching Fit TV. I was in college, and I saw this guy named John Jock Machado. Um, moving on the ground, he was very agile, he was very smooth, he was very athletic. And these were things that, you know, I had through boxing. Yeah. But jiu-jitsu was a, it was like an opposite end of, end of the spectrum mm -hmm. when it came to fighting. Mm -hmm. So I saw it, I liked it, I picked it, and I've been doing it for 15 years. I also trained judo too. I've been doing judo for, <laughs> I've been doing judo for 11 months, and I'm a orange belt net that means go, i'm a go q sweet that's awesome so like what would be your uh your go-to advice like one shot advice for like new people who are doing jujitsu um for new people that are doing jujitsu um you need to make sure that you find a, a club that you fit with mm -hmm. you know you need to find a, a gym environment and an instructor that you feel comfortable with who you can talk to um good teammates make sure the place is clean you know professional and from there, I think the best thing that you can do is just be a good student. Mm -hmm. You know, attend classes, do your very best to learn um, what the professor is teaching you, be observant, pay attention, try to memorize the techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, from there, you start to experiment. And from experimentation, what's the next level from experimentation? Imagination, you need mm -hmm. to, you know, think about um, the stuff. You know, imagine where you could be making goals for yourself. Communicate. You have to communicate with your training partners. Communicate with um, the people that are teaching you. And have an open mind. Gotcha. So, uh, do you want to plug, like, your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever? Um, <laughs> Instagram is um, JB3BJJ. Okay. That's where I'm at. Cool. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave it on the screen so you guys can go check them out. All right. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate you. Very welcome. All right. So it's currently 10, 11 p.m. Um, so I usually end my day, actually my Wednesdays, with like the jujitsu classes. I usually go at least like three times a week, at least two times a week, um, either Mondays and Wednesdays or Wednesdays and Saturdays, um, or like on other days. So Mondays and Wednesdays we have um, with gi, and Tuesdays and Thursdays we have no gi, and then Saturdays like um, open mat and like adult fundamentals so i usually go mondays and wednesdays for adult fundamentals and today's a wednesday so i went there and my days usually end with that so afterwards i just eat um do a little bit of studying i try to sleep at like my my deadline my my latest time when i sleep is like 12 but i usually try to get to bed at like 11 30 p.m so i can wake up at like 6 30 or 7 30 or between 6 30 and 7 30 in the morning so that's usually my night and that's it for today's video i hope you guys like the video if you guys want to see more day in the life vlogs definitely let me know and um i'll be doing this you know from time to time but yeah thank you for watching the video and i'll see you in the next video bye bye